Michelle, I call the next part of the dinner special podcast the pressure cooker. I am going to ask you seven fast and fun questions that we want to know your answers to. Are you up for it? Okay. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Number one, which food shows or cooking shows do you watch? Ooh, I actually don't watch a lot of TV, but I do watch one cooking show. It's called The Great British Bake Off. Um, I've been wa- watching it like before. It, it, start- it just recently started airing on PBS in the US, um, but I've been like streaming uh, past episodes, past like seasons because that were only available in England. And it's so good. And it teaches you so much about baking. It's just like this reality TV show where they like pick bakers from all around like the UK and like get them to like bake traditional British desserts. And there's like judges and everything. It's great. It's so good. <laughs> awesome. And if, if people don't have it on PBS, they can stream it online, I guess. Yeah, yeah, totally. Great. Number two, what are some food blogs or websites we have to know about? I think you mentioned a couple already, uh, Fixed Feast Flare and um, Food 52. Yeah, Food 52 for sure. Um, So this is another hard one. This is like choosing between my children or something because I read a ton of food blogs. But right now, I guess I'm really into some of the like smaller blogs that haven't gotten that as much attention yet. So I'd say I really love Renee Kemp's for her photography. Um, And she's just like the nicest person in real life too. She's so sweet. Um, And Ono Eats is another one that just has like such beautiful photography and her food always looks amazing. Um, And uh, so I'm probably pronouncing this wrong, but Le Jus d'Orange. It means orange juice in French. Um, it's this girl, Betty, in Boston who makes, like, really amazing, like, she's Chinese. So she makes a lot of dishes that her mom used to make and then a lot of fusion dis- dishes, too. She's awesome, too. So Perfect. Number three, who do you follow on Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook? And I've added a new one. I've added Snapchat <laughs> that make you happy. <laughs> oh, Okay, that's another tough one because I follow so many people. And fun fact, actually, so my, being an old person, my Snapchat doesn't work on my phone. So okay. <laughs> I don't actually have Snapchat. Um, so we can eliminate that. Um, Pinterest, I follow so many people, but there's this 17 year old girl who I think lives in Southern California. Her name is, um, oh my gosh, what is her name? But she has a blog too. Um, it's called Lace and Lilacs, and she's going to go study photography in Paris. And just, like, for a 17-year-old, she has, like, such a good eye. She's always, like, painting such beautiful photos of, like, not even just food, but, like, of flowers, of people. So she's a big inspiration. Um, and on Instagram, I really like Coco Cakeland, who, like, posts these, like, really cute Instagrams of, like, cakes, like, frosted like animals that are like so cute um she does a lot of like tiger cakes and yeah really cute highly recommend following um and linda lomolino is the other one on instagram who is amazing she like does cakes as well but hers is like kind of the opposite direction from coco cake lands hers are just like really pretty classic cakes that are like adorned with like natural flowers so yeah great number four what is the most unusual or treasured item you have in your kitchen hmm most unusual i'd say is i have an office label maker (laughs) in my (laughs) kitchen um i'm kind of a neat freak when it comes to the kitchen and i have all my ingredients in like their glass jars that are easily accessible and my handwriting sucks so i was like you know what i'm just gonna get like an official label maker (laughs) so i can label these and it looks great so (laughs) that's probably the weirdest uh item that's in my kitchen and i use it a surprising amount um but that might just be me being like insane so uh, there's that and then i'd say the most treasured item is probably my kitchen aid mixer you know yeah yeah great number five name one ingredient you used to dislike that you now love Ooh, another really good one because i used to be actually a picky eater so um let's see what did i used to dislike um cinnamon actually that's kind of weird and boring I know and like it's a weird controversial thing to say cinnamon because it's in everything but I used to like really hate that like fake cinnamon taste like from red hots and like 
cinnamon altoids, you know? Yep. And for a while, I was like, oh, like, I was using, like, really cheap cinnamon that, like, was kind of, but was, like, old, probably, like, a bottle of, <laughs> it was five years, and my, this bottle was just, like, been living in my, like, cupboard for years, who knows? So it was just, like, flavorless or, like, weirdly artificial, but then my friend got me, like, some designer cinnamon. I don't even know where it was from. It was from some fancy shop in New York, and she was like, okay, you're so weird. Here, try this, and I was like, oh, it's actually pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, so that's the weird one, yeah. Okay, so cinnamon. It's mm-hmm. actually not that weird, though, because my, my wife doesn't really like cinnamon either. So <laughs> yeah, well, like, I feel like you're either, like, you like it a lot or you don't, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. So. She, like, she can't have a cinnamon bun, but I love cinnamon buns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, I, it actually took me a long time to come around to cinnamon buns, which is, like, really hard for me to say because I have a couple cinnamon bun recipes on the blog and they're very popular and I do like that recipe but yeah when I was making them I was like I don't know really <laughs> this but yeah. great number six what are a few cookbooks that make your life better I know that the hummingbird bakery cookbook definitely sort of you know did a lot to sort of change your life a little bit um, mm-hmm. but what are some other ones that make your life better Ooh, okay that's another tough one so I'd say the one that just really improved my baking skills most recently was the 4 and 20 Blackbird's Pie Cookbook. I've always had a really hard time making pie. I don't know why. That's like my big like Ach- Achilles heel when it comes to baking. My pie crusts were always like soggy and ugly. But, you know, um, I got their book because I went to their bakery in New York. This is like how I get half my books. I go to their bakery and like get sucked in. Anyway, and um, they just had such like beautiful photos of like the like pie making process, like what it looks like after you like rub the butter in. Um, so that one was super helpful in making, like, in helping me learn how to make pies. Um, the other one that I really like, and this one's relatively new, is Food 52's Genius Recipes. One of their editors, like, went out and found, like, recipes that she was, like, these, like, produce really amazing results for, like, pretty simple process. And, like, I've made a couple things from there, and it's, it's so good. Um, yeah, I'd say those are the two big ones right awesome. now. Awesome. Awesome. And finally, number seven, what song or album makes you want to cook? I know that you mentioned Taylor Swift, but then that you also like to watch movies in the background. So, you know, if there's a movie that you'd like to watch, you can shoot out a movie as well. <laughs> okay. Um, definitely, yeah. I like t- listening to Taylor Swift's latest album when I cook. Um, and yeah, in terms of movies, it's crazy. I just, okay, this is going to sound really weird, but I like having action movies like as a background. Because they're easy to like follow along to when you're baking, and like you can kind of like step in and not step out and not pay attention, but then come back and be like, oh, okay, I get it. Something exploded. Like, <laughs> okay, there's not really like any twists or anything in most action movies, so they're always fun to bake too. Um, what other music? I listen to a lot of top forty radio uh, while I bake, which is really weird because in college I like didn't listen to any top 40 at all and I used to listen to like the most pretentious music um which I still like to listen like like lots of small indie bands and everything which I still like to listen to but just not while I bake because it gets too like I don't know it's <laughs> just not as fun <laughs> yeah so the, that's yeah that's that <laughs> perfect well congratulations Michelle you have officially survived the pressure cooker <laughs> thanks